Hey, this is John. Welcome back to Modern Old School Developer. In this episode, we're going to start working on making uh, our front end talk to our back end. So in the last video, we set up our first API endpoint on the back end. That allows us to import clips from the hard drive into our database. But I don't want to have to go to the fast API UI or use Postman or ThunderCline or something to trigger that. I want to be able to trigger that from the user interface. So let's modify our admin form to add a button that will allow us to import clips. So either I'll put it in a little frame down here or below here, I'm not sure yet, but we'll do one of those things. So let's go ahead and start working on the front end interface first. So let's go to front end, public source, not public, just source. Um, let's see here, open the pages, there's the admin page. So I think we'll probably abstract uh, the admin form into its own component. I didn't have that before, but we will uh, later on. So we'll do that a little bit later. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to just edit what we have down here. So we either put it above or below the format context. I think I will put it below. So let's go down a little bit and we'll make another div over here. And this div is going to have a black border, just like the other one did. And we want it to have the space of the content. So where did I do that before? Yeah, it was um, with max there. So MX auto padding and with max. Let's do the exact same thing here. So MX auto with max and padding four. Okay. So that should give us that. So the next idea is to give it uh, or make a button that will allow us to do the import. So we said we need to put a button in here. Don't have to be a grid. Let's, let's see what it looks like when we just make the button. So button type equals button. And we're going to say import clips. Now this won't look very well right now, but let's see what it looks like. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't look terrible actually with, with, with the board, it looks like a button actually already, but we need it to be um, below this. I didn't, I didn't actually want it to be inside this same thing. So let's go see what's up with that. Okay, I put it inside that div. I didn't want it inside, the, I want it below the div. So we'll start by doing that. And we want, and now we have two components, we need to put make this a fragment, so we have one component that we're returning. Okay, got MX auto, we're probably gonna need a margin Y as well. So let's put a margin Y of four on that first div. Okay, that looks a little bit better, so let's work on styling our button. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's make it class name, we're going to give it a background color, sorry, background blue 500, hover background blue 400. We're going to make it text large and font semi-bold. Okay, text needs to be white. I want the blue to be darker and I want there to be some margin and padding in there. So let's make a padding of two. Let's make the text white and the text to be centered. Okay, that's not bad. I want um, more padding on the X axis. I want it to extend a little bit uh, more than that. So let's say padding Y is gonna be two, padding X will be eight. Yeah, that looks better to me. So now when we click this button, I want it to import our clips. So let's see what we can do about making that work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an on-click handler. So on-click, and we'll say on import clips. And we'll make this function somewhere. We'll make that, I don't know, up here or something. So let's see here. Let's make it I want to make it outside the function. I don't know why. Let's see here. Let's do um, const on 
import clips equals async. So it's going to be an async function. And what we're going to do is we're going to call that. And then we need to do something to indicate that it actually worked. Because if we just do something in the background, we're not going to see much. So we'll have to do something to let us know that that happened. So let's first work on actually making the clips work and then we'll do something. So what are we gonna do first? We need to make an API request. So we need to know where our API is. And to do that, I'm going to make a .env file. This will allow us to have variables inside our application. So I will say react app backend equals HTTP localhost 8000 because that's where our backend API is running currently. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then on the admin page, we will say uh, const base URL equals process.env.react app backend. Okay. And prefixing it with react app underscore is important. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to export that variable to the process environment. I don't know if that's set up by React or set up by um, Create React App, but I know that having that prefix is important. Then we need to make our actual thing. So I did change the name of the endpoint. I didn't like that it was a get endpoint, so I changed it to be a post to slash movies. So when we post to slash movies with no parameters, we will import the movies. So let's see about doing that. All right, so we need to make a fetch request. So let's say const request, no, const response, response equals fetch. This is going to be a URL. I'm going to use backticks to use a string in here or to construct a string. So it's gonna be base URL slash movies. So actually, I don't know, maybe we just put this in here and not use base URL. That's probably fun. All right, let's do it that way. So we have that. And we need to supply some properties to our fetch request because um, it's not a get request. We need to say method is post and headers are an object and the content type header is going to be application JSON. Okay, so because we don't have um, any parameters, we don't need any query stream, we don't need any body, so we can leave those like they are. So we do need to await this fetch. That way we'll actually get the fetch. So next we'll need to parse the JSON. So let's do const data equals await response.json. Now we will have a JSON response whether or not the response was okay. So we're, if we get some kind of bad server problem, you know, a non 200 error code, we'll still get a response, but hopefully the response is okay. And we, what we need to do is probably set some kind of state. And in fact, that probably means I need to look at putting this inside the admin page. So let's move this down to over here. All right, so let's add some state. So let's say const, we need a state to say if it's okay and what happened. So we want an import status. Status set import status equals use state and it's going to be an empty string for now. All right, so when we have an import status message, that will tell us what we need to display on on the thing. So um, if response dot okay, then we will set import status to successfully imported movie files. Otherwise, we'll set import status to fail to import movie files. All right, so let's see what we can do with that uh, down below. So let's go down to this component. And what we're gonna do is we will have something right below this button. So I'm trying to think we need to put that in a div or not. I think we're gonna have to. So let's put a div there for the button. If we say, um, import status, if we have an import status, then we're gonna return this div right here. So let's just put 
put that in there and we will simply return the import status. So I think that should be okay. So now let's see what happens. Let's see if we can actually make our response. So there we go, we've got all of that in there. I think it should be good. Let's go to the terminal real quick. Make sure things are running. So yeah, let's go into our app real quick and let's go run the import clips. Ah oh, man, we got an undefined problem. Const not found. Undefined movies. Hmm. Well, let's see here. It says I was posting the localhost port 3000 slash undefined slash movies. Well, that doesn't seem right at all. I think the problem is that adding this environment variable, um, we need to restart our server. So let's go back to here. Let's stop that and do npm start again. So we'll go ahead and close this one. It'll open a new one for us. We'll go to the admin page, open up F12 to get a console, and then run import clips. There we go, it goes to localhost 8000 now. But now it says cores missing allow origin. So you can't make a request to a different site from your browser. That's called cross origin request and that's not allowed by default. So we need to go fix our back end to make sure those things are allowed. So let's go work on that. So if we go open up our back end, come on VS Code, come up, huh? Let's go close this and go into our back end. And we'll go into our main.py. There is a plugin for Fast API called the Cores Middleware, and that is what's going to allow us to accept requests. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, from fastapi.middleware.cores import cores middleware. This is built into Fast API. It's not an extra package you have to add. All right. So after we create our application, what we're going to do is we're going to do app.add middleware. And we're going to add the cores middleware. And we're going to say allow origin regex. And we're going to use a, an R string, so we can use regex stuff. So we are coming from localhost on port 3000. We know that because this is our API. So this right here is where we're coming from, just this part before the admin, everything up to here. So it has to match exactly on the back end, but it doesn't. We are trying to go to 127.0.0.1 colon 8000. Those aren't the same. That's why it's a cross origin request. So what we need to do is we need to allow request from localhost 3000. And localhost is a synonym for 127.0.0.1. So we'll allow requests from either. So let's take a look at that real quick. That's where we're going to use this regex. So we'll say HTTP and we will give it an optional S. So we'll say S question mark, make that optional. Uh, colon forward slash forward slash. We're going to do a non-capturing group. And the group is going to be, so it's going to be either 127.0.0.1 or it's going to be localhost. Okay, then we're going to say it is port 3000. But because you might be running more than one um, React application, let's make it so we can do ports 3000 to 3009 just in case. All right, we also need to say allow methods and that's gonna be an array and we're gonna allow all methods. So get, post, put, delete, anything. And we're going to allow headers and again, we allow any headers. So there we go. That should be our course middleware. And that's pretty much all we have to do to allow our React app to connect to this. So let's go back to there and try it again. So I will go ahead and clear this out and I will say import clips. And you can see we have successfully imported our movie file. And if I go over into the terminal over here to Python 3, you can see we did do a post request for movies. So 
We didn't have any movies to import. We didn't have anything else in the folder. But we can go fix that and try it again and show you that it does work. Let's fix this. This should be in the center of this place right here. So let's go fix that real quick over on my admin page right down here. I want this to be class equals flex uh, justify center, I think. Should be class name also. So if we do that, there we go. That's more along the lines of what I wanted. Uh, this is mostly okay. It could be a little bit, a little bit nicer, but I think it's fine like it is. And maybe at some point we'll make um, this the same size as this. I don't know if I care about that that much. I may style this a little bit more, but it's okay for now. Let's go prove that that actually did work. So in our main, well, you can't see that right now. We don't have anything in there. Let's go change this to actually use our movie list. No, no time for that. We'll do that next time. Uh, let's go prove that it works though. Let's go over here, not that terminal. I just want VS Code. Let's go over here. We'll go to the database. So we got nothing in imports, everything is in movies. Let's move everything in movies to the imports folder. And let's uh, go into backend and let's remove our SQLite database. Now go back to our Python 3. Let's stop that. We'll run UV core movie manager main colon app dash dash reload. And now you can see we do have our SQLite database again. If we select everything from movies, it's blank. So let's go back over to our endpoint and go to admin. We'll hit import clips, successfully imported movie files. And now we do have our movies again. So you can see it did work. We made a request from our front end to our back end. All right. Well, that's a good wrapping up point for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about cores and making API requests and fetch and post and all kinds of useful things. If you did, hey, I'd appreciate it if you leave a thumbs up for the video. You can even subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow, and I love you for it. So, take it easy. I'll see you next time.